I call this society over there. <laughs> Men and women, what's the hurry in that direction? This is a fruit stand devoid of color. I say to the viewer, figure out what kind of fruit it is based on the shape, mofo. <laughs> this is a portrait of a pig much later. <laughs> I was at a party. There was a guy offering people milk duds. This candy back home that's popular. Out of nowhere, unsolicited. Hey, man, you want a dud? You want a dud? I was like, whoa, where's my camera? Photo op, bam, look at that. Frame nicely, foot and everything. <laughs> Most people, if they even shoot a balance beam, are gonna go this way. Well, I took this sucker long ways. We call that perspective in the biz. <laughs> I was in an army store, army supply store. I wanted to buy some army boots, some GI boots. I found that they were too big for my feet. And I thought, hmm, symbolism. Me and the military, not a good fit. One-handed photo right there, bam. This is a bicycle with a sombrero on it. I think this speaks for itself. <laughs> I was, sometimes I set my camera up on a tripod and capture myself one moment in the day. Unexpected. This was 10 in the morning after kind of a rough night. I had some Tylenol, you know, I had a headache. But look, there's a Manet on the wall. I like his work. And I just thought it was framed nicely, kind of during my Jesus phase. It's like a trinity of being hung over. And then I was walking by this bus stop in the village, and I saw, look at this, a black guy, a Hawaiian guy, a South American girl, and a Hasidic Jew all waiting for the same bus. I was like, oh my god, that's like a melting pot bus scenario. <laughs> Capture that. So I did. It's funny, though, when I, I was looking at the pictures, I developed my film, and I noticed a weird coincidence I discovered between all the photos, which was each picture can be described with a palindrome. You know, a word or a phrase that's the same forward and backwards. If we go back, I'll show you what I mean. First one, the man and the woman, I realize it's actually a picture of sexes, S-E-X-E-S. -E -E it's the same front and back. In the fruit stand, Ooh. I noticed no lemon, no melon. Mmm, <laughs> a ham. Mmm. <laughs> Dude, dud? <laughs> if you fall, it stuns nuts. <laughs> Fellas. I found that the GI boot's too big for my feet. <laughs> El cycle. <laughs> 10 a.m. Lonely. Tylenol. Manet. <laughs> Yo, aloha. Hola. Oi! <laughs> I'm not a photographer. <laughs> I'm a guy who's obsessed with palindromes. To give you an idea of what I'm talking about, here's one of my notebooks. One ride on the subway yielded this in one of my notebooks. This is me working it out. Yeah, you see, I'm figuring them out. When I come up with a good one, I put a box around it so I can use the palindrome later for something. Red nuts at fist under. That's a keeper. <laughs> wow, one man's tit. Oh, got its name now. Ow. <laughs> Shakespeare for the retarded? I don't know what that is. Tony H., why not? Okay, what does this lead to? All this work, the crown jewel in my kingdom of useless talents. A 224 word palindrome, the whole thing is the same forward and backwards by letter. It's the second poem in your program tonight. About an alcoholic mailman, kind of. Right in the middle, if I, the show itself, a tiny palindrome. In the middle of the big palindrome, in the middle of the show, all woven together, and it doesn't make me any cooler. <laughs> It makes me a guy who spent a lot of time doing something wildly unproductive. <laughs> Which brings me to the third meaning of the word if. If meaning whether. Okay, sample sentence. The small hairy man wondered if it was wise to wear the tank top. <laughs> In my case, I started to wonder if I couldn't deconstruct anything with a little bit of analysis. The satisfaction I was getting as a kid from puzzle books, from someone else's problems, and then from my own little puzzles did I need that, the challenges and everything? Couldn't I just derive the game or the puzzle from things just by looking at simple things and finding it within? And then things started to emerge, like swimming. For example, swimming, to me, that's a confusing sport. Because sometimes you do it for fun, but then other times you do it to not die. <laughs> and when I'm swimming, sometimes I don't know which one it is. <laughs> I got to go by the outfit. Trousers. Uh-oh. <laughs> Bathing suit. Okay. Naked. We'll see. 
I think about drowning. I think drowning would be a horrible experience. But I bet a little less horrible if right before that, you're really thirsty. Because <laughs> then you're like, man, I can use a drink. Oh, that's good. Whoa, too much. <laughs> that's why when I swim, I always bring pretzels. <laughs> I think the worst time to have a heart attack is during a game of charades. <laughs> Especially if your teammates are bad guessers. <laughs> I was at a party, I saw a guy wearing a leather jacket, and I thought, that is cool. Ten minutes later, I saw a guy wearing a leather vest. I thought, that is not cool. And that's when I realized that cool is all about leather sleeves. <laughs> I like fruit baskets. A fruit basket enables you to mail somebody fruit without appearing insane. <laughs> If you just mail somebody some apples, they're like, what the hell is this? But if you put those apples in a basket, they're like, this is nice. I keep a lighter on me at all times, you know, in my back pocket. I'm not a smoker. I just really like certain songs. I believe that you can learn something in every situation. For example, this summer I, I was at a party, and I learned that there's a small but important difference between peeing in the pool and peeing into the pool. <laughs> location, location, location. I don't like thank you cards because I don't know what else to say. What do I put on the inside? Man. Sea <laughs> front. I use this product called I Can't Believe It's Not Butter. Because sometimes when I'm having toast, I like to be incredulous. <laughs> How was breakfast? Unbelievable. <laughs> I grew up near the beach, and uh, I, like to, I like the beach. I like to get there really early before everybody else shows up. And I take like 30 bottles with notes in them and throw them into the water. And then I wait for everyone to come to the beach. And when someone goes to pick up one of the bottles, I go up behind them. Because when they open it, inside there's a note that says, I'm standing right behind you. <laughs> You see, to me, this was a self-contained enjoyment, little games that I was just finding every day, walking around the street, you know, just in a store, sitting on a train. Things just started to pop up. But something strange was happening at the same time, kind of a parallel development. You see, I, I was on my course, achieve, achieve, goal, one after the other, to law school from 11 years old. And so I get there, first year of law school in New York. I arrive, and surprise, one week in, I hate it. It sucks. You have to understand, this was the plan. I'm the guy who's 12 years old, and people say, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I say, I don't know, either litigation or corporate mergers, I'm not quite sure. <laughs> what a prick. <laughs> but then I get there, and it's, no, it's no good. Socratic method, that's what we have in American law schools. Socratic method, you come into class the first day of the semester, pick a seat. Surprise, that's your seat for the year. The professor has a seating chart, and you can just put your name in there and look down and say, Mr. Martin. State the facts in the case Bowers v. Hardwick and just calls on you. Such a power play. I said, this, this is not for me. What am I going to do? I've got to put this into terms I can understand and make it a game. And that's when word of the day started at my law school. Word of the day was, if you get called on, you have to use the word of the day in your answer in class. And I will give you the word of the day before class, right outside. So now, there's 110 of us in the class <laughs> and one professor. And there are 110 people waiting to hear the word bagel. <laughs> and one guy who has no clue. So game on. One of the first words was a